Hello, everybody. Today, I wanted to give you a recap or rather an overview of how it is I work with people and how I share all of the knowledge that has accumulated in my brain over the years. The work that I do in the mind-body connection field has evolved so much for me thanks to the clients that I've been able to work with in a one-to-one -one capacity and also in my groups as well as the amazing guests who have been interviewed on my podcast. Some of you may have come across me on social media. I'm most active on Instagram under the art of listening to your body as well as Facebook and some of you have listened to one or two episodes of this podcast, caught some interviews, or maybe you have binged the whole lot. I hope you've enjoyed it. But a lot of people do ask me, how do I find out more about the work you're doing? And of course, as it evolves and I add more that I can offer, it can get a little confusing as to how it is you can learn with me. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to share on the podcast. As a quick overview, I do work with two separate groups of people. One is practitioners and coaches in the alternative as well as the conventional space who want to delve deeper into the mind-body connection. And then I also work with non-practitioner type people. So that would be anyone and everyone else open to the general public. If you are completely new, I should give you an overview of my work. Because I started off as an osteopath, as a physical therapist in my professional life, and I would see people mainly for their physical ailments. And my spiel used to be that your physical body is a reflection of your emotional state. However, I have now been able to delve a lot deeper and help people beyond just their physical issues. It goes much deeper than that. So if you have joined me on any of my free masterclasses or you've been on courses with me or you have worked with me, you will be very familiar with my spiel, which is your physical body, your mental and your behavioral body are a manifestation of your emotional state. And basically what happens is that normally we move through life and our body wants to express emotion, usually at the time of a certain life experience, an event in our life, or sometimes the traumas that we might experience. Now, I don't tend to use the word trauma a lot with my clients or in my group courses because I feel like it has a lot of stigma attached to it. Trauma for me is simply stored emotions because you can have two people who have had similar experiences. Of course, they're very unique, but they've had similar experiences and one person rates it a 20 out of a 10 experience of pain and someone else is saying it's about a two out of a 10. So it all depends on their upbringing and other emotional experiences that they've had in their life. So usually we move through life, we have these experiences and emotion wants to be expressed at the time. However, there are a couple of reasons as to why people don't express emotions or rather suppress them in their body. And when emotions get suppressed or not expressed, they get stored in the body as a source of stress. And we all know that we can cope with stress for a certain amount of time. You compensate, compensate, compensate until you can't anymore. And this is when issues manifest. So you can look at these stored emotions or stress in the form of an overflowing cup. So I like to call it your emotional cup. You cope, you cope, you cope, you store, store, store those emotions or you suppress them and you start filling up your emotional cup. And whilst it's filling, you're compensating, you're getting along with life, you're functioning. And then all of a sudden your emotional cup just overflows. It spills over. And this is when you will manifest physical, mental, and behavioral issues. 
So before I get into the physical, mental, behavioral issues, I just want to talk about a couple of reasons why I feel that people suppress their emotions. There's two main ones. The first one is in Western society, I feel like people see emotional expression as an inconvenience. And the example I often use is around grief, loss, death of a loved one, a family member or a friend. And in Western society in particular, there's a lot of practical masculine processes to go through when someone passes away. Things like trying to organize a funeral, organizing a will, just the general logistics around family. Sometimes, unfortunately, there are family feuds that have to be dealt with. And then there are emotions of other people that you might have to work through as well. So all of a sudden, there's these practical, logical things that have to be done. They get in the way of the grieving process. So a lot of people put their head down, they go and do these things and they think, I'm going to process this afterwards. Now, in the case of grief, I do feel like there is often a healthy period of disconnect that happens. But unfortunately, if we don't get the opportunity to express our emotions and we store them in our body, after a period of time, it can be really difficult to actually access those emotions. So you can imagine in the scenario of grief and loss, especially if there's like family feud stuff going on, it all just gets squashed down. And when the space finally comes up, which can be many years later, it can be very difficult to access those emotions. And by the time all those emotions have been stored in the body, they can manifest in many different ways, which I'll go into. So that's the first one, inconvenience. We feel it's inconvenient to express our emotions, that it's going to distract from living our life. Sometimes there are things like we or you might have to work and pay a mortgage and support your family. So then all of a sudden that becomes a priority. It's survival mode. So inconvenience. And then the second one is that you may not even know how to express a certain emotion because you weren't brought up in a family environment where this emotion was expressed in a healthy way. So I love to use anger and sadness as an example. And both of these are very healthy emotions to have when they don't harm yourself and they don't harm other people. So in terms of anger, you might have been brought up in a very volatile household environment where your parents were very explosive with their arguments. They were yelling at each other. Maybe there was some physical interaction as well. And there's a couple of ways that you can respond to this. One is that you actually behave the same way that they do because you feel like, well, that's how anger is expressed. The other thing that can happen is that you remember fearing the anger so much and going into that fear state that you would never raise your voice. You would never express anger because all you feel around it is a whole heap of negativity. So you actually kind of go into a shell, which also isn't that healthy because anger is a very healthy emotion as long as you're not harming other people and you're not harming yourself and you're not destroying things around you. Anger is an energy that helps you transform. It helps you create and put things into action when it is channeled in the right way and focused in the right way. Sadness is another example. You might have been brought up in a family where you have never, ever seen your parents cry, or they might have said words very flippantly to you because maybe they couldn't cope with your emotions and they told you, stop crying, harden up, just stop being so sad. So all of a sudden, these normal reactions, you feel like, oh, this is wrong. So when you get older and these emotions want to come up, it can actually feel quite uncomfortable. And sometimes we have to learn how to express these emotions. So that's the second reason I find that people often suppress emotions 
is because they have been brought up in an environment, they have been taught by role models, family, people around them, how to express emotions. So inconvenience and then not really understanding or knowing how to express emotions. So as I said, you can compensate, you can store these emotions, you can pile them up into your emotional cup and everyone has a different tolerance level or a different threshold. But when that emotional cup spills over, I always think of it like just coming out of their head, this is when it can manifest physically, mentally or behaviourally. So a few examples of this and everyone's going to be different is physical manifestations can be pain in the body it can be chronic pain it can be some of the autoimmune diseases like your rheumatoid arthritis or any of those kind of arthritis chronic pain injury injuries that do not heal like they should despite the fact that you've done all your rehab recurrent injuries and little niggles in the body those aches and pains Headaches are another thing as well. So injuries, reoccurring injuries, physical pain, chronic pain on the physical level. And then you've got mental. So if you think of that cup spilling over and just hitting that emergency release button, it can be the person who just flips in anger. They go into a rage and they regret or they feel very shameful about their behavior. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, but something just triggers them. On the mental scale, it's also anxiety and depression, which I also like to normalize. I feel that anxiety and depression are actually normal feelings for people to experience. But what's not normal is when someone stays in an anxious state for a long period of time or stays in a depressed state for a long period of time. And this is where I love to focus on helping people to process their emotions and understand their emotions and normalize the whole spectrum of emotions, all of the high and the positive ones and all of the negative ones, which are also just normal. So anxiety, depression, then also fears and phobias, the kind of irrational stuff that comes up. So those are the mental kind of things that I notice in people. And then behavioral stuff are things like your eating disorder, disorders. So anorexia, bulimia, orthorexia, where people focus on healthy eating and become very controlled about it. Then your addictions like sex, drug, alcohol. And then there is a whole range of addictions. People will generally know if they've got addictive behavior. And then other behavioral things like OCD. So um, obsessive compulsive disorder, checking switches, checking locks, um, making sure they tap things a few times, otherwise they feel like things will go wrong. So behavioral type dysfunctions. So it can be physical, it can be mental, or it can be behavioral. And sometimes it's a combination of all of the above. But some people, depending on their constitution, will manifest more of the physical stuff, more of the mental stuff or more of the behavioral stuff. And that's what I really love about the work that I have learned over the years is that be being trained as a physical therapist and learning this stuff, I recognized how much deeper I could take my work with my clients. It was no longer just about the physical stuff and I didn't have to get scared about the mental issues or the behavioral issues. I could put the whole picture together for people. So just as a general person listening to this, if you have got anything that just isn't sitting right with you and you're like, oh, I've got that, I've got this, then yeah, continue listening on because I do believe a large percentage of the stuff that we experience is emotional. So overflowing emotional cup because you store emotions because it's inconvenient or you don't know how to process or express your emotions and then they manifest in your physical, mental, and your behavioral body. And I just gave some examples there. So how I started doing this work was one-to-one -one when I was in the osteo clinic. And then I moved into the online space and I only had the opportunity to actually talk and listen to my clients and not put my hands on them. 
I remember catching myself thinking, well, if I put my hands on someone, if I stick needles in them, put cups on them, crack their joints, I feel like I'm doing something. And when I was forced into the online space because of stuff happening around the world, I actually realized the power of just being present and listening to people and what I could do just on a verbal level. So what I do is help people process their emotions, teach them to process and express the emotions that they didn't get a chance to with maybe memories, life experiences, events, and the traumas that they've had in their life. And so I would typically attract what I call complex clients. However, I am noticing now I am attracting more people who just resonate with the work that I share, the mind-body connection, and they actually want to prevent and live their life to their full potential. So I would attract clients who typically have what I say, been around the block and they've tried lots of different therapies and it's just not quite getting to the bottom of it. Or they have gone higher up and they've seen specialists, they've had imaging, they've had blood tests and they haven't really received any clear diagnosis or reason as to why they're experiencing their physical, mental or behavioural issues. And this is why I love to share this work such as on social media and on the podcast to help create awareness and connect with people. And a lot of the people that I see just resonate with the words that I use and what I share. And what is it they resonate with is they have this deeper feeling that there is something emotional going on. They realize that the history and the life that they have had and the emotions that they haven't expressed may be contributing and be stored in their body and may be contributing to their presentation of their discomfort on the physical, mental or the behavioural level. So I interweave Eastern philosophies. I use a lot of stuff around Ayurvedic doshas and also chakras and thankfully have seen many thousands of clients through appointments and seen how these patterns show up but it's all about interweaving of this knowledge and I do love to keep things really simple because if you went away and read about chakras and doshas right now you would probably get a little bit overwhelmed and intellectualizing the work and so over this period of time I've delved a lot more into the field of energetics on a very practical level and you just kind of have to see it play out to really believe it. So I would attract complex clients and I would attract a lot of people with conditions that um, some practitioners would get a little bit scared about. So it can just be things like your anxiety and depression, but also um, people with cancer um, and people with autoimmune diseases that don't really have any names to them. And so a lot of the time I am not against um, I am not against conventional medicine and sometimes I do believe we need to use it, especially if the body is at a crisis point and we need to get it out of pain. So it's all about coming to peace with what is it you can do to support your body. And if you need to reach out to conventional medicine, there's no shame in that. Don't have guilt around it, but feel emotionally sound with your decisions and then also do the deeper work because there is usually an emotional reason as to why the body has gotten to this point of breaking down and manifesting these issues. So that's why I love using the Eastern philosophies around doshas and chakras and having interacted with a lot of clients, because if I do get a client coming to me with cancer, I'm not there to try and fix their cancer. I am there to help them process the emotions around everything around the diagnosis, around their treatment, around the historical stuff that they might feel is contributing to their presentation, um, be it physical, mental, behavioural, but also how going through ex an experience like this um, can affect them and filter into all areas of their life. So I'm being a little bit vague there because I won't go into details <laughs> this is just a little bit of an overview but I love that I am also attracting people who 
want to prevent getting to these crisis points. They want to live a healthy life. They want to live to their full potential. And a lot of people just think of their health. However, when you work at this level, at the emotional level, at the energetic level, it filters into all areas of life. So we talk about not separating the mind and the body, but I also think it's important not to separate just physical issues, mental issues and behavioural issues. It really is about looking at the person as a whole. So this work actually goes a lot deeper than just fixing problems. And I really want to have like this paradigm shift around health to get people thinking more from a preventative standpoint. It goes deeper because, again, this is probably another topic, but when I do get to work with people, whether it be one-to-one -one or in groups, I just see so many layers peel away. And primarily I am aiming to remove the pain, although it's not my job, that is the other, the person being involved has to participate in the process. But when you remove the pain point for someone, the thing that is getting in the way of them living their life, so many other amazing things come up along the path, along the process. And so I really feel that this work is about connecting people to their sole purpose and doing things that feel in alignment and living their life to their full potential, not just physically, mentally, behaviorally, but at that soul level is really doing something that fills their cup, that just feels really good and is of value to other people and more so to themselves. So again, <laughs> that's probably a whole nother topic, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse around this work. So I work with one-to-one -one clients, but I will only work with them over a minimum period of 12 weeks because I do not want to be the practitioner that opens up the can of worms and then just leaves people hanging. Because for me, when I work with people, the first few sessions can be pretty full on. And a lot of the time people don't really know what they're getting themselves in for. But the stuff that can come up and the way the body reacts requires some space holding for people to understand all of that stored emotion is going to come out of the body in some shape, way or form. And I don't always know how it's going to come out, but it can be a little bit uncomfortable and it can be, it can freak some people out how it manifests. So I want to be there to be able to support people with all of the changes, all of this discomfort that comes up when people are stepping into the life that they really want to live and into their full potential. So I will work with people over 12 weeks. And this is where I say it's just really fascinating. I know that for the first few weeks when I'm working with someone, it's going to be pretty heavy with processing emotions. Their life is going to be a little bit chaotic externally with their relationships and everything that's going on and then all of a sudden it just kind of switches and people start to see the space between they start becoming less triggered in their life and they start to see the energetics of this work how people are responding differently to them how they're responding differently to others and then opportunities start to open up I can't get specific, like there are so, just so many things, like I'm just smiling as I'm saying this because there are just so many incredible things. I very much live in the moment, so it's, it's hard for me to recall in the moment unless I'm actually talking to someone, but there are so many incredible things that open up for my clients that they didn't expect to happen when they delved into the space of processing and peeling away at their emotions. So the key of the work that I do is around processing emotions and improving emotional metabolism, because my aim is, is that for all of you, you have an ability to process your emotions as soon after an event, rather than storing it in your body. And even better would be knowing yourself so well and stepping into your power that you can actually process your emotions at the time, but it is continual work. 
And when your cup isn't full, you just have an ability, you've got space, you just see the world and people around you from a different lens. However, it does take work. So that's the work that I do with one-to-one clients. And I find that incredibly satisfying. But when I started in the online space, I also, because I went from being a practitioner who had a wait list, which was actually quite overwhelming in its own way, because I wanted to help all these other people, I decided to train practitioners, other practitioners, so alternative and also conventional practitioners who just had an interest in the mind-body connection and wanted to delve a little bit deeper and understand how to hold space for some of these uncomfortable things that might come up in their sessions. And so the feedback that I've had is once people have been through the training is that they feel like it's the missing link. And it's just so satisfying. I don't have a competitive kind of feel where I feel like I need to hold on to this work because there's just so many people out there that I feel need this work. And there are so many other amazing practitioners out there. And it's important for people like yourselves to feel aligned with the practitioner or therapist that you're working with. So there are some people that are just not aligned with me and they won't do so well working with me and they're better off with someone else. So I love to share this work and see other people bringing their own intuition and their own spin into being able to facilitate emotional release with their clients and just hold them at a much deeper level. So teaching, I teach a verbal dialogue process and how to facilitate and how to hold space and these practitioners have to go through their own processes as well to empty out their own emotional cup because the stuff that you hear in consults is truly fascinating on so many levels and sometimes you're hearing some pretty heavy stuff and if you have a full emotional cup you're not going to be able to sit in that energy and sit in that space and then all of a sudden you're not actually able to help your clients because stuff is going on for you. So I teach practitioners in a training called emotional body training. And it's really unique because they get to work on themselves and experience a release that I take them through and it gets recorded and everybody gets to watch it and everyone's really nervous about being recorded, but it's an opportunity to release. But it is such an amazing learning opportunity to watch the process be facilitated. And that is the only time that people actually get to see me facilitating a release on someone. And the other incredible thing that happens on this practitioner training is they're not only learning how to facilitate this work with clients, but they are really intuitively aligning and creating a values-based in a very aligned business that feels right for them and therefore serves their clients better. So I just love it. We've got (laughs) so many people that end up quitting from their profession and delving right into the coaching space, flipping their work right on its head. And I've just actually had in the last week, three people in groups or messaging me, telling me, guess what? I'm going to resign from my job or I'm letting go of this and I'm moving into this space, which is kind of a little bit scary, but it's very exciting. So when you do the deeper work, it can be pretty full on because big changes can happen in your life. And I always advise that you do this with support because sometimes you can question whether or not your decisions are the right ones. But it's just been amazing to work with these practitioners see them grow and see them delivering this work. So I've been able to refer clients to these people because obviously when I can't see people, I want these people still to um, have help available to them. So as I said, I work with a practitioner stream of people and help them sort of look at redesigning their businesses if they're not really happy with it and showing them that there is another way. Because when I got into the online space 
and I met all these people in the online space, practitioners and coaches, it was just a completely different world. And unfortunately, I feel that a lot of practitioners fail out of practice because they get burnt out or they're not actually working in the way that they want. So if I just stay on the practitioner stream, I then have a mastermind that is available for practitioners where they continue to receive practical strategy, intuitive strategy that is aligned for them because I actually get to know these people in this mastermind and help them design a values-based and a very aligned business that is good for them and good for the people that they serve and works into their lifestyle rather than lifestyle having to work around business. So there's a little bit of strategy, but what I find is there is a huge emotional and energetic piece to helping people step into them, their true selves, which sounds bizarre because you'd think that that would be easy, but because of the world that we grow up in, because of the experiences that we have and the conditioning that we're exposed to, it can actually be really hard to step into who you really are and express who you really are. And there is a huge fear of judgment and criticism from peers and friends and family. So practitioner training, then there's a mastermind available for practitioners, coaches, anyone who kind of wants to pivot in their business and really create something that is more at a deeper soul level, a really heartfelt business that actually supports them and their families and I do have a new mastermind coming out in 2022 which I think is a really auspicious number I think it's going to be a good year every year is a good year but I feel like there's big things on the cards for 2022 and the difference is that I'm going to be opening up this mastermind to practitioners and coaches who have not already worked with me. So previously it was only people who have been through the practitioner training with me that I would take into the mastermind. However, this is going to be open to um, the right practitioners and coaches who are aligned with my way of working. So if you are interested in that, just shoot me a message or put notes in the podcast notes as well so you can find out more about that as I get clearer about it as well. And then what happened was I was getting a lot of requests from people saying, when are you going to run a course or a training for people who aren't practitioners? And I thought for such a long time, oh gosh, there's no way that I could do this work with someone without it being one-to-one. -one. But then when I stepped back from my clinical work and I was focusing in the online space and I took some time off, space is amazing for creativity. I had a month off and I all of a sudden conjured up this group course called Release. Some of you might have heard about it, but this is open to anyone and everyone. And the focus really is working on yourself. And it's six weeks and it's pretty intense. And I take you through stuff and teach you things live, but you also have a course platform that you can go through at your own pace. And you're learning, and I share very openly the release process. However, you are doing it in a self-directed way. So you need to make sure that you feel safe to be able to go through the process. And this has been amazing. I've run this group twice live, and there's been over 60 people in these two groups. And I went from being this person who felt like I couldn't have more than like eight or 12 people in a group. And then all of a sudden I'm hit with over 60 people in a group, but the universe doesn't hand you anything you can't handle. Right. So I ran with it and it was just such an amazing learning opportunity for me. So people who come on to release the six week course, they get to learn the process. They get to do the process and they get to ask me questions on live calls and in a Facebook group that's really interactive to get support in the moment to learn how to process emotions because it's a very simple structure. It's a very simple process with prompts, but when the mind gets in the way, the mind gets in the way. And when there's opportunity to grow, resistance shows up. So that's why I love to run my courses live to speak into the individual and what's going on. And then I do 
kind of like a mini crash course on doshas and chakras for those people who want to just understand themselves on a deeper level. So release, I say, and I always emphasize that it's for you to work on yourself and not to learn to work on other people. That is the practitioner training, but you have to be an experienced practitioner to be able to facilitate this work. You have to have had some experience already. So release is open to anyone and everyone. 60 people sounds like a lot. Maybe there's going to be less. Maybe there's going to be more next time around. And I am looking to run this again in February 2022 and see how that goes. And I learned so much from running a big group and there was such a different energy. So some people are not suited to a big group and other people um, prefer one-to-ones and vice versa. But I actually think that there are benefits to both. They run at a very different energy. And in a group, you actually get exposed to a lot of stuff, which again, not everyone is up to. But you get inspiration and you get ideas from other people based on what they're sharing. And it's such an incredible, in all of my groups, it's an incredible, vulnerable and safe space to share things that a lot of people have never spoken about in a safe and non-judgmental space. So release was because I just had a capacity as to how many one-to-one clients I could see. And I love teaching and I love sharing about this work and showing people in real life how it actually interweaves and our mind, our body and all the things that we experience on a human and an energetic level are not separate. So I'm often saying to people, I'm helping people work out, is this physical? Is this emotional? Is it human? Is it energetic? Or is it a chakra issue? Or is it a dosha imbalance? And then what happened off the back of my first release course is that people were interested in taking this work further. And Over the years, myself experiencing longer term coaching programs of six months or 12 months, I have seen the power of being able to work with people over a longer period of time, because I think anyone can hold the energy and do the thing for six weeks, 12 weeks, four months, but then to be able to integrate this into your way of life and creating lifelong habits is a different story. So I created another group, which you probably haven't heard of unless you've actually been in one of my groups called Embody. And that is an ongoing coaching program after you've done release, because that is the foundation. Embody is a six month ongoing coaching group program to keep taking this work further, keep delving into the world of energetics and using the basis of what you learn in release that emotional release process, because that is what I always bring people back to. If you're getting stuck, do a release first. They've done release, then they move into embody and we just start unpacking things as they come up. And it's really fascinating working with groups and actually multiple different groups. There seems to be some pretty consistent themes that play out. So it's all about just talking to the themes that pop up And for people really to learn how to communicate with one another and create that safe space, that non-judgmental and safe space for people to be seen, heard, understood and to feel safe. So release is a six-week course. It's open to anyone or everyone. There is really no criteria, but when you see me put it out there again. If you feel into it and it feels right, then I would love for you to be on the course. It is pretty full on. And then there is an opportunity to continue if you feel like you really want to embody and integrate this work into your life and carry on into the Embody six-month coaching group. And that's for non-practitioners as well. And it's been amazing. A lot of the people from the first group have re-signed to join me for a second time around because it's never the same. This work is always changing and it's just been incredible to see their growth and celebrate all of these crazy changes 
And a big thing in all of my groups, whether it's practitioners or non-practitioners, is I really try and encourage people to learn to walk with the dark and the light because we're going to have great things happening in some people's lives and we're going to have big challenges happening in other people's lives. And it doesn't mean that one has to take away from the other because there is always both happening in the world and we are always going to come across challenges, but we're going to have high moments in our life as well. So really learning to celebrate that. So... I don't know if that sounds confusing or not. And also a lot of the stuff that I do just kind of pops up. But my one-to-one work, it often does book out three to four months in advance. If you're interested in it, there are links in my podcast notes. You can go to drjinong.com and you can see the work with me tab. And you do need to fill out an application form just so that I have a little bit of an idea of where you're at and I can point you in the right direction if one-to-one coaching isn't a fit for you. But if you are keen, whatever you do, please don't leave it to the last minute. I do have a lot of people contact me and say, hey, I'm having surgery in four weeks. Do you think I could prevent this? Or I've got this going on and I need to have treatment. Um, I would love to be able to help you and I can help, help you wherever you're at in your journey. But quite often, I can't help you immediately. So if you think that you're interested in one-to-one work, I only work with four people at any one time. And you do just need to go through a little application process. I'll put that in the podcast notes. The next best step would be to do the release six-week course if you're not a practitioner, or even if you're a practitioner and you're curious. However, I strongly advise that if you come on this course that you do not facilitate this work with anyone because um, it can be pretty intense and you definitely need to do your own work to empty out your emotional cup so that you can hold space for people. So the release six-week course, I'm looking to do another one in February. And of course, if you're on my email list, you will get notifications about this or you can look out on social media, on Instagram, The Art of Listening to Your Body. And then the practitioner training, I am considering only doing this once in 2022. So that will be in May and this runs for around 10 weeks. And that is where you get to do a release with me and work with me in a group. And I have amazing coaches that work with me as well. And that consult gets recorded and you get to watch other people's consults. So it's a huge learning curve and it's really an opportunity to delve into how you're practicing, what you might want to change and deliver a deeper level of work in your consults to your clients. And then there is a mastermind that is going to be open to aligned practitioners, coaches, anyone in the sort of healing space who wants to make big changes in 2022 and really show up and express themselves and create a values base and aligned business. I've got more details coming on that soon. And then The other thing that I do is random pop-up Zoom Q&A sessions. And so you can learn stuff from me for free. I hope to offer more of that in the coming months and next year and look at offering smaller masterclasses. However, I just know that when you immerse yourself in this work, there is just so much more opportunity for learning and You might go in with one intention in mind. However, when you do this deeper work, so much stuff can happen in your life. Like I said, we've got people in our groups quitting their jobs and finding more aligned jobs, changing their relationships, deepening their relationships, going their separate ways. There are just so many fascinating things that I really just feel you've got to feel it and experience it to really understand what I'm talking about. But I thought it was important to just give you a recap because this work is always evolving and some people kind of just go, well, is the only way I can learn from you the podcast? 
it's one way and there's snippets, but I love to bring the full picture together. But I do work with people one-to-one. You just need to give yourself plenty of time and also me plenty of notice. And then the release six-week group course, which is a lot of people, but the energy is amazing. Then there's a practitioner training if you're a conventional or alternative practitioner who wants to go deeper with the mind-body connection. And then there are ongoing group coaching programs as well that are available for both practitioners and also non-practitioners. However, if you're just a little bit lost and you don't know where to from here, please feel free to message me. As I said, Instagram is probably where I am most active, but you will be able to find my email and I'll pop information in the podcast notes. And I should mention um, that I did do a masterclass that gives a really good overview and way more teaching in it than what I've covered today. It's the release masterclass and you can buy that for 47 US dollars. And I have had great feedback from people who have delved into that masterclass. And as long as they feel safe, they have been doing the process and they have been experiencing releases and shifts. So there are lots of ways that you can learn with me for free and in a paid form. And I hope to offer a lot more to you next year. So I hope you're amazing. Have a great week and I will be back soon with more information.